How you doing? I'm Callan and this is Slapped Ham. Today we're talking about bizarre coincidences. From a guy who cheated death seven times then won the lottery, to a dude who caught a baby falling out of a window twice. We count 12 bizarre coincidences that are almost too strange to believe. In the 1930s, a man named Joseph Figlock from Detroit was walking down the street when a baby fell out of the window from the building above and landed right on top of him. Both Figlock and the baby were unharmed and the mother was extremely grateful that Figlock had just saved her child's life. One year later, Figlock was again out walking along the same street when the same baby fell onto him from the same window. As before, both Figlock and the baby were unharmed and the mother was once again very grateful. When the makers of the film The Wizard of Oz were designing the costume for the fortune teller Professor Marvel, they wanted to make him look as though he was down on his luck. Costumers hunted around and eventually found an old tattered coat in a thrift store that would work perfectly. Whilst filming, Frank Morgan, the actor who played Professor Marvel, noticed there was someone's name written on the inside of the jacket. It was L. Frank Baum, the same name as the author of The Wizard of Oz. Thinking it was a joke, the crew contacted Baum's widow and the tailor who made the jacket. They both confirmed that the jacket did indeed belong to the author. Frank Morgan played four other characters in the film besides Professor Marvel. The gatekeeper at Emerald City, the coachman, the guard who refuses to let Dorothy see the wizard, and of course, Wizard of Oz himself. Croatian music teacher Frank Salak could well be the world's luckiest man. He's escaped death seven times. In January 1962, Salak was aboard a train that derailed and plummeted into an icy cold river. 17 passengers died, but Salak was pulled to safety, suffering little more than a broken arm and hypothermia. The next year, whilst on his very first plane flight, a door malfunctioned and he was sucked out of the aircraft. He woke up in a hospital after being found unconscious in a haystack. The plane crashed, killing 19 people. Three years later, Salak was aboard a bus that skidded off the road and into a river. Four passengers drowned, but Salak managed to swim to shore with only a few cuts and bruises. In 1970, his car caught fire and he managed to get out just before it blew up. Three years later, he was singed by flames that shot through the air vents of his new car caused by a malfunctioning fuel pump. He escaped with only the loss of his hair. In 1995, he was hit by a bus but received only minor injuries. In 1996, he swerved into a guardrail to avoid a head-on collision with a truck. The guardrail gave way and Salak was ejected from the car. He managed to grab hold of a tree as the car fell 300 feet into the gorge below, exploding into a ball of flames. Then, shortly after his 73rd birthday in 2003, Salak bought a lottery ticket for the first time in 40 years. He won 1.1 million US dollars. In 1914, a German mother photographed her son and took the plate to a store in Strasbourg to have it developed. World War I soon broke out across Europe and she was unable to return to the store to get the photograph. She moved to Frankfurt and two years later she decided to purchase another photographic plate, this time to take a photo of her newborn baby daughter. When she had the photo developed, she noticed that it had been double exposed over another photograph. It was the original photograph she had taken two years earlier of her son. Somehow, the photographic plate had been reused and sold back to her in a store that was over a hundred miles away from where she took the original photo. In the 1920s, American writer Anne Parrish was browsing through a bookstore in Paris. She came across the book Jack Frost and Other Stories. Parrish turned to her husband, telling him how much she had loved the book when she was a child. Her husband opened the book and discovered that there was writing on the inside. It said, Anne Parrish, 209 North Weber Street, Colorado Springs. It was the same copy that Parrish had owned as a child. At 7.25pm on Wednesday, March 1st, 1950, an explosion destroyed the Westside Baptist Church in Beatrice, Nebraska. Choir practice was due to start five minutes before the explosion, yet none of the 15 members were inside the church. They were all running late. Two members of the choir had car trouble, one overslept from a nap, one was writing an important letter and another simply lost track of the time. One was helping her mother and the reverend and his family were late because his wife had to iron their daughter's dress at the last minute. Other members had no specific reason why they were late, they just were. 
If anyone was inside the church when it exploded, they would have been surely killed. It was the first time that all choir members had been late at the same time. On Christmas Eve of 1994, identical twins Lorraine and Lavidia Christmas of Norfolk decided to drive to each other's house at the same time to deliver a present. The weather was cold and the roads were icy. Both sisters lost control of their cars and had a head-on crash with each other. Luckily, they both survived the accident and were taken to a nearby hospital. They all spent Christmas Day together, including their father, who was recovering from surgery in the same hospital. In the early 1970s, Anthony Hopkins was cast in a film called The Girl from Petrovka, which was based on a book by George Pfeiffer. To research the role, Hopkins decided to read the book. After visiting several bookstores in London, he was unable to find a copy, so he decided to catch the train home. As he entered the Leicester Square stop, he noticed an abandoned book sitting on an empty bench. Amazingly, it was a copy of The Girl from Petrovka. Two years later, while Hopkins was filming the movie in Vienna, author George Pfeiffer stopped by to visit the set. During a conversation with Hopkins, Pfeiffer admitted that even he didn't have a copy of the book. He had lent it to a friend who lost it somewhere in London. Confused, Hopkins showed Pfeiffer the book he had found. Amazingly, it was Pfeiffer's copy complete with original handwritten notes in the margins. In November 2003, Dorothy Fletcher had a heart attack while flying from Manchester to Florida to attend her daughter's wedding. When the stewards made an announcement for any doctors on the flight to come forward, Mrs. Fletcher recalled, I couldn't believe what had happened. All these people came rushing down the aircraft towards me. Mrs. Fletcher was on the same flight as 15 cardiologists who were all on their way to a conference. They were able to keep her stable while the plane was diverted to North Carolina. She even managed to make it to her daughter's wedding. During World War I, the British Navy converted a cruise ship, the RMS Carmania, into a war vessel. They disguised the ship as a German passenger ship, the SMS Cap Trafalgar. On September 14, 1914, the RMS Carmania attacked and sunk a German ship off the coast of Brazil. In a bizarre coincidence, the ship they destroyed was the actual SMS Cap Trafalgar, which the Germans had disguised as the British passenger liner, the RMS Carmania. The two children seen in this photo are Amy Madden and Nick Wheeler. In 1994, Nick, who was six at the time, was on holidays with his family in the seaside village of Mousehole in Cornwall, UK. Amy and her family were locals and were also spending the day on the same beach. A year later, Nick and his family moved to Cornwall where they eventually ended up attending the same sixth form college as Amy. They met and fell in love. One day after the couple got engaged, they visited Nick's grandparents' house where they were looking through old holiday snaps. They found this photo of Nick in a sandboat playing with his sister and cousins. When Amy looked closer at the photo, she was shocked to realise that she was in the same photo. In an amazing coincidence, the photo that was taken 11 years before Nick and Amy had even met, it had captured the two holidaying with their families side by side. The couple married at Goldville Church in Mousehole 20 years after the photo was taken and just a minute's walk from the beach they had played on as children. In 2007, Michael Dick began searching the UK for his long-lost daughter Lisa. Dick, seen here with two of his daughters, reached out to the local newspaper, the Suffolk Free Press, who agreed to help him with his search. Amazingly, Lisa read the article and couldn't believe her eyes when she saw the photo. She was actually in it. She said, I was completely shocked. Me and my mum had been standing in the exact place where the photo was taken about a minute earlier, and you can actually see us in the picture walking away. It is incredible. Lisa reached out to the newspaper and was reunited with her father. Well, hey, well, there's another episode in the can. Thank you so much for watching. Now, if you can't get enough of the ham, remember to follow us on all our social medias. All our accounts are just below there. And that's it for me. I'll see you all next time.